Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Lucy Ann. I want to welcome you to the Front Porch Knitter podcast. Um, it's just going to be talking about what I'm working on, what I've got um, on my needles, what I've finished, life in general. I need to talk about knitting and I discovered that over the course of this pandemic that the one thing I missed the most was not chatting with people about my knitting. I knit a lot in public just because of what my job is. I often have my knitting with me and people see me. So that's kind of cool. Um, we are on my front porch today and I noticed I'm a little blown out but that's okay because it is too beautiful to go inside and um, it will let you guys appreciate just how lovely it is. I'm sure you can hear the birds because they're everywhere and I hope no big trucks go by because that will just you know we'll just pause if that happens and go from there. I'm going to talk about to you about a few of my finished objects first because that is um, exciting because it's been a few you know few weeks since I talked to you last and I just wanted to show you so I did two pairs of socks out of I'm just going to show them to you this one's for my daughter and these ones are for me she has tiny feet I do not and they were done from the frosted stitch um, icy sock and the colorway is the 90s called in the last podcast you would have seen this still in the skein but I wound it up it is lovely um, it's their icy sock base and I really like it and the pattern um, Rose City Rollers by Mara Catherine Briner and the sock blockers should technically be in my acquisition section I just got those they're pretty cool and um, you'll hear about them later so that is the socks that I finished the I also finished this um, Musselberg hat which I I'm not sure if it was on, even on the needles yet I love doing these Musselberg hats if you want just like mindless knitting these are perfect they're the ones that um it's just a big long tube this is um hat trick yarn exclusive to river city yarns by ancient arts and you just tuck it up inside like that and fold the brim and adjust to your liking and it's good to go and this is the canada colorway um if you followed me on Instagram, you'll know I've done some of, they have hockey teams and football teams, and I've done several of the um, hockey teams in pairs of socks. And the next thing I finished, and this, I sh you saw the, um, the kit in the last podcast. This is the Magpie Darling Hat by Amanda Kafka. Look at those sparkles. pretty cool and uh, I don't know if I can get it on over my braid without mucking it up too much it's just the perfect amount of slouch and fit and it sparkles and it's cool I love it love it love it this is done in um, King Cole Cosmos and the little addict she has these kits. She's the Crafty Jackalope. If you go to her website, she always has kits for these Magpie Darling hats. This is the Magpie Darling 2, so it's slightly lighter. I'm trying to decide if I should put a pom-pom on it or not. I'm not sure. haven't decided yet. It is finished. I can wear it, so that makes it a finished object, so that's good. The other finished object I have, I'm wearing... It is a Tonico cowl by Francois Denoy. This is amazing. She, um, this is the Tonico colorwork cowls, and there's several different motifs. I did um, just a short version of it because I wanted it to wear in the spring. It's um, done in a merino and bamboo blend, so it's really nice. I've been wearing it with my jean jacket. It was actually finished at the last podcast but um of course it was with my 
jean jacket because I'd been wearing it and I forgot about it completely. So uh, this is the colors are the wool is from Legacy Yarn, no, Legacy Fiber Mills, and they're in New Brunswick. Let's see, I think near Sussex is all I know, but that's, and they have a mill, so they mill raw fiber, but they also have um, kits and things on their website, so go check them out. It's, the colorway I chose was key lime pie and da daiquiris, and I think this is the key lime pie and daiquiris, I think this is just their um, blank base. Aren't those gorgeous? And I just love this. And I have enough left. I think I want to do it also with a dark background because I think that would make these colors pop more. What I loved about this, it was a knit along. I did it with a friend of mine, Heidi Stevenson. And um, Francois de Noy celebrates her heritage. And um, this is was celebrating her Maori heritage. And these are sweet potato leaves which are very important to the Maori people. And I just really loved that it, it was such an intimate part of her that she shared with the world. And I thought that was really cool. And um, I just loved it. And it is so cozy and it looks really great. I didn't own, have my jean jacket on today, but it looks really great with my jean jacket. And um, just perfect for, you know, cool, cool spring mornings or there goes a car. Cool spring mornings or um, summer evenings. It'll be just the perfect cozy around my neck. Um, that leads me to what I'm wearing. And it is just, you can't really tell, but it's just a shrug. It's just this, like a big piece of rectangle of fabric folded. It is um, the Shrug Selena Warmer by Tanya Steinbach. And it is literally done... And I think it's Patton's Colorworks was what it's called, but it's basically a chunky yarn. It um, was bought at the Spinrite tent sale. I paid probably nothing for it, like li not literally nothing, but it was pretty inexpensive. It is my most worn knit garment. It sits on the back of a chair in, in our living room, and I put it on all the time. It just is the perfect wrap rectangle. I can't really stand up and show you because if I do, I'll fall off the porch. Um, but check out that pattern on Ravelry. I wear it all the time and love it. So last week, I, the last time we chatted, I had a lot, a lot of whips. So I'm just going to share a few of those with you now. And I'm still working on these. And I'm just going to flick away. I'm getting messages because it's Mother's Day today that I'm filming. Um, I haven't done the collar yet on my Comfort Fade Cardi because I wanted you to be able to see how beautiful that fade is. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Last time I showed it, I was working on the sleeves. I just love this. And hopefully the next time I will have the... Um, I'll have the collar on. I am just loving this cardigan and it fits so nicely. I'm really excited about it. And I love that it's reverse stockinette. That just makes it even more interesting. And it's just yummy and sunshiny and I can hardly wait to wear it. So that's exciting. I've been working on it a little bit, but I saved it to be able to show you guys. We talked about this last week, this basket. It's my gnome basket. And um, look away if you haven't started, if you're doing the Not Just Another Gnome Cal by um, Sarah Shira from Imagine Landscapes. I just started Clue One last night. So that's kind of exciting. I love doing these mystery cows because you start to knit and you don't know what you're going to end up with. And I'm doing it, and I use my favorite minis to do this. These two, I think, are Polka Dot Creek. This one is um, Ritual Dyes, 
and it's called Sprite. So I don't even know what I'm knitting. I think it might be his hat, but I'm not sure. But it's yummy cables and things. If you'd like to participate in this cow, it's not too late to start. It is um, Imagined Landscapes on Ravelry. And I think you can also find her on Instagram the same way. And um, yeah, it, it's a great way to use up minis. I just keep things I think would make good gnomes in this little basket. And it sits out. Because I think gnomes are really fun to make. I don't know, I've done four or five this winter already. So that's kind of a fun go-to thing that I have always a few, you know, thoughts. I'm always thinking about the next one. So it's always on my needles. And of course I have another Musselberg on. Look at those colors. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that. This one is... Um, so what I love about the Musselberg is you can do it in any yarn. It's a recipe. So you sort of figure out how many stitches per inch you have and it says, okay, you should um, get to here, this many stitches on your needle and then knit till it's this long. And so everything in your stash will work. You just have to follow the recipe. This one is in Sueno Tweed Haiku and it's a Scaisel yarn. Here comes another car. There it goes. Um, in, made in Peru, and it's superwash merino, and viscose from bam, bamboo and Donegal viscose. So a couple of different viscose fibers in that. The Musselberg, if you're looking for the pattern, is by Isolde Teague, and it can be found on Facebook or on um, Ravelry. And if you do, if you look for the hashtag um, Musselberg hat on <clears throat> Instagram, you'll see lots and lots of them. And people do, there's some pretty amazing ones. I just love knitting them because they're perfect right now. I'm, if I'm in a Zoom or if I'm doing a virtual knit night or any of those things, they're the perfect knitting for those kinds of activities. Now I always have socks on the go. These ones are in my little Dolphina bag that we talked about on the last episode and <clears throat> they are the Pico Pico socks by Lydia Gluck and I think they were in a pom-pom issue as well but the pattern I think is free on her um, on her blog and I am knitting these in Regia Cotton Tutti Frutti. And this colorway, I don't know if you can see, knits up like watermelon. Look at that. Isn't that cool and fun? Um, Tiny Feet, I'm doing these for my daughter as well. And um, I'm doing these, I just got, these are an acquisition actually. Um, these are Addy Flexi Flips. I wanted to try them, so I ordered them and I have to, sadly, I couldn't find them anywhere but on Amazon. I would have preferred to buy them from a knit shop, but I couldn't find them, so. A little sip of tea because it's chilly out here. There was frost this morning, just so you know. But I'm really enjoying knitting with this yarn. I did them toe up. The pattern is a toe up pattern. And I'm just past the heel turns, the short row heel. And I'm about to do the little bit of the leg, which is pretty short. My daughter, um, this daughter, I have two daughters the daughter who I'm knitting these for, she um, doesn't like long socks. She likes shorties. So that's always nice because shorties means I don't have to knit for very long and I can finish a project for her. And she's appreciative and she's knit worthy. So that's always fun. I think this is the last of my whips because I haven't worked on my Millstream tunic at all. 
I need, I haven't been in the right headspace. I think we talked about the last time I was on. I really need to, I, I need to have mind room to work on that because it is a lace pattern and I, I have to follow it more closely. So I just need headspace. And this last few weeks, I haven't had headspace for much. And um, this is the perfect example. Um, so I got this. You can see it's darn good yarn. It's reclaimed sari silk and lyra lurex, 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 sparkly stuff, pretty sparkly stuff. Um, and I wanted to do some kind of a summer wrap or, and I just, I have it on a long cable chow goo just because that's what I had in the right needle size. I've started this three times in another pattern that I loved. I love the lace pattern, but it was a 16 row repeat. And I can't do 16 rows right now. Just where my head is, it's not working. Um, this is a four row repeat. I can do four rows right now. But I think this is going to be beautiful. This is the... Um, my notes are on the table here. So when I look down, that's what I'm doing. Little Arrowhead Lace Scarf by Mary Jane Mucklestone. And I just, I just, yeah, it's fun, it's easy, it's easy to remember. I just worked on it one evening, and um, I'm really looking forward to having this done to be able to wear it. I love this kind of thing, like now, early in the morning when I'm sitting outside, just around my neck to keep me a little bit toastier, or, or in the evening, if I'm sitting outside, to keep the damp off. Um, and it is in my two sticks in a U bag, which are from British Columbia, Canada. I love the hot air balloons. And this bag is way too big for this scarf, but it was the one that was sitting on the coffee table when I started knitting. So it's the one that got used. So now comes the best part, <laughs> or at least when I watch podcasts, I think it's the best part to see what everybody buys. So these are my stash builders. And um, I have a few, I have a few, that's just an under, a few is an understatement. Um, I think, except for one thing, everything came from the Little Red Mitten in St. Thomas, Ontario, because, you know, it's close, which means it comes fast. If I order, I get it within a couple of days. And, you know, we're all about that. So for local yarn shop day, um, Casa Pinka offered her pattern, the Nancho, which is a beautiful um, popover poncho kind of a thing, um, free to um, little local yarn shops. And Little Red Mitten put together kits, and this is the kit I am doing, so you can check out that. So these are Patagonia Organic Merino. And the colorways are indigo, um, ivory, and this one is, I should know this, but I, oh, wasabi. Look at that. Isn't that a great green? I just love it. I really like this. And it's soft and yeah, this came this week and I want to, I give myself little goals so I don't have too many things cast on at once. Otherwise my living room starts to look like I take, well, who's kidding? I have taken over, but um, I would like to get my comfort fade collar done before I start this. Because I think it's going to be a pretty quick knit because it's pretty simple. It's striped. It's gorgeous. And maybe by the next time I see you, I'll have that on the needles. The other thing that um, I'll show you all these things. So I got um, Full Moon Fibers does these. They're called Lucky 5050 Sock Sets. Look at that. And I don't know if you watch the Crazy Sock Lady, but I do watch her. And she gets every month from um, Mandy's Makings, which is in the U.S., she gets the Share a Pair set. And I love that idea, but 
the Canadian dollar right now is so bad and shipping from the US is a little bit insane, like not cost wise, how long it takes. So when um, Full Moon Fiber did these 50-50 sock sets, I thought I can make my own share a pair. And I have a friend in mind who I want to send the other one to, who is also a sock knitter, which is kind of fun. These are uh, Living in the Moment and Blue Breeze are the colorways. So Living in the Moment, look at that, all the yummy colors in it, and Blue Breeze. And this is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 166 meters per 50 grams. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do striped socks in these, like the ones the Crazy Sock Lady does, because I like the ones Kay does. They're very nice and they look fun. And I'm excited for this. And yeah, it's just, the whole idea of sharing a pair makes me feel like I'm doing something with someone else, even though we're very, well, and we're very far away from each other, um, the person I have in mind. So I picked this up on a whim because I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, but I wanted it. This is Holst Super Soft, and I got Indigo and a Crew, knowing that I could do something. Maybe, maybe hand warmers or color work mittens. I don't know. Um, Little Red Mitten has this in a million colors. I wanted to knit with it to see what else I might do with it. Um, but I wanted to see if I liked it first. So I just picked up a couple. I'm really looking forward to that. These are 100% um, wool, 50 grams, 314 yards, 287 meters. So fairly fine. I don't know if you can't see. If you can see the fiber size there kind of hard against the bright sky behind me but I'm really looking forward to knitting with that as well and the other thing so I have to show you this so um, Little Red Mitten did 100 days of whips this year which was just a way to get things out of the way and you saw my last week's uh, my last episode all the things I had finished well most of those were part of the 100 days of whips just working on things to get them done. And then they had this really cute enamel pin, which couldn't resist, which is great. I have to figure out where I'm gonna put it. They also do, over at Little Red Mitten, this is like, I love them, they are my local. Um, you know, some people have a local pub, I have a, my local yarn shop that's pretty close by. They do these, yarn tastings which is great because I don't know right now the one thing I find I haven't been I haven't been to it in a yarn shop and I don't know how long and I haven't been to any shows or and as I'm working I don't always know which yarns to choose so this is a 20 gram minis of a selection this one is I'm pretty sure it's a DK no this one is a sock um, tasting and um, it's just little bits of various wools. This one is Silk Garden Sock by Noro. You can see, look at the beautiful colors. It's all blowing out because of the sun. That's okay, that's why we knit on the front porch. This is um, a Leo and Roxy DK, one for the money. This one is West Yorkshire Spinners Color Lab, and it's True Blue. I hope the color comes across. It's just a really nice denim -y, inky blue. This one is Cascade Anchor Bay Deep Blue. It's really nice. This is a Sandsgarn Sisu in Navy. Really nice, deep, dark navy. And this one is uh, Lang Cash Merino in Sky is the colorway. So what it did give you a lot of good information about each of the yarns in the tasting. It's kind of like buying a flight of yarn. And um, 
I think the really nice thing is, is it gives you a chance to knit a swatch or um, do a little, a small garment or a small activity, get the feel for the yarn to know what you want to knit a bigger project out of. Because sometimes, sometimes you just can't figure it out on your own and it comes with um, these great little project planning cards, which allow you to make notes on the various yarns and maybe plan out what project you might like to do on them. And um, that's kind of fun. The only one of my subscriptions that came in um, since the last time I recorded was my Ancient Yarns Color of the Month. This is their soft, on their soft NATO base and it's Renewal is the colorway. Isn't that a great spring colorway? All the peaches and orange and green. I love this green. And the flashes of bright pink, which I love. I really like this. I, I don't know. I, I really like ancient arts yarns. Um, I knit with quite a few of them. And uh, yeah, this is fun. I like getting surprise mail. And um, this makes me happy. And that's why I knit, because it makes me happy. So that is all my acquisitions. My sock blockers, which we looked at before, and my Addy Flexi Flips, which are already have a project on them. And that's it for this last little few weeks for my stash building activities. It's, um, it's been pretty dull and not very nice here in Southern Ontario. After having had a few days of like 22, 24 degrees, it's been cool and damp and windy. And I'm just thankful that this morning I could be on the front porch to record this. The, um, I'm just gonna tidy up a few things from the last episode. Um, a few people asked me because not all my friends are knitters. So what is an FO? An FO is a finished object. It is not a short form of an inappropriate term. It is a finished object. Whips are works in progress. And um, yeah, stash building, well, that's just, you know, insulation. It really is just a form of insulating your home, building your stash. And, you know, it's energy efficient, so we should all do it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's kind of fun. And yeah, another thing someone asked me was how long I've been knitting. And it's it's tough. I don't always want to say. I will, I will tell you how long I've been knitting, but I won't tell you when I started. So it's over 50 years I've been knitting. And um, yeah, that's a long time. And I don't know, it's, I'm one of those people who um, have always worn clothing that I've made myself. I, I knit, I sew, especially when the children were younger, I sewed a lot. When I was younger, I sewed a lot. I, uh, in high school, a lot of the clothing I wore was made by me. And, uh, you know, I would sew my own flannel shirts to get the right fit. I would sew my own turtlenecks to get the right fit. I knit most of my sweaters. I always had hat smits and scarves that matched my jacket. I've always been a bit of a yarn. I shouldn't say yarn snob, but I've always really enjoyed um, natural fibers and color. Um, I had a very, very hot pink ski jacket in high school. And um, I had a black and hot pink Angora hat mitts and scarf to go with it because if you could knit an Angora hat mitts and scarf, why wouldn't you? And I loved, loved, loved that. And it had um, so reclaimed fur trim from an old coat from someone that had been around the hood and I it was not even going it like it was so worn it wasn't even going to the to the to the thrift shop it was literally going out and so I reclaimed whatever I could from it including the fur from around the hood which I then put around my hat yeah that was me I um, I love to create and and I 
I don't know. I'm not a designer. Like, that's not my thing. But I do knit from scratch and from nothing. I like the, I am for sure a process knitter. If anyone asks, I am a process knitter. I wear everything uh, or I find somebody to wear it. But I do just need to knit. So I make sure I always have things in my arsenal that I know I will wear or someone I know will wear. Because um, if you're a process knitter and don't have anyone to knit for, that just means you have a lot, a lot of finished things that nobody's using. And I don't like that idea either. I think it's important that the things we knit get worn. That's who I am. And uh, sitting out here on my front porch is really, really what helps me get through the day. And uh, I often have my tea out here. I have to knit out here first thing in the morning. And if you can hear the birds, I feed them out here on purpose so that I can hear them. And I know some people don't really get that. And that's okay. That it's, we're all different and that's a great thing. And um, we should all do what gives us joy and work with fibers and materials that give us joy. And we should never um, feel that we have to use a certain thing or do a certain thing because that's what all the people on Instagram are doing. Um, I love this patterns color work shrug and I wear it all the time. I've knit, I don't know how many of them because I, you know, people see me mine and ask for one. It is the simplest thing to knit. It is done in a very affordable yarn. You could do it in much, you know, a much more luxurious fiber if you wanted to, but I love it in this fiber, and I love it because it's like a giant hug that I can put on. Enjoy your knitting, everyone. Knit what you love. Knit with whatever fiber gives you joy, and knit wherever makes you feel the most at peace, invigorated, however you want. For me, it's my front porch. And uh, thanks for joining me on my front porch today. So I could talk about my knitting. Till next time, everyone. Happy knitting. Enjoy and take care of yourself.